Hello, welcome back to the Arturia Jupiter 8 video series. Today we're dealing with the LFO. Uh, this stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. And in the previous episode, we dealt with envelopes, which is all about a one-shot modulation effect on volume or pitch or whatever it is that you, you want to change. LFOs are all about periodic changes uh, in modulation. So these are cyclic things that are going to happen again and again. We have uh, this LFO circuit over here. And the most important slider is the rate knob. This is the speed at which the thing is going to cycle. The easiest way for me to demonstrate the LFO is with pitch. So here we have our oscillator modulator, the VCO modulator, and we have a slider that's hardwired to the LFO. If I turn that all the way up and press a key on the keyboard, that's a pitch increase being applied by the LFO. Now the rate at which the modulation is being applied is set with this slider here. Double click it so you get to one hertz, which means every second the LFO is gonna do its thing. It's going to start with our original pitch, which is C3. It's going to raise it by an octave and it's going to decrease it by an octave and it's going to do that periodically uh, every second. So the upper limit of that is C4 and the lower limit is C2. If we change the rate, we change the speed at which that oscillation happens. 20 hertz all the way down to it sounds like nothing but you can hear very very slowly so that's one one hundredth of a hertz it's going to take one minute and 40 seconds to complete a single wave and that's about one every three seconds so that's the simplest uh, method of uh, applying an LFO and that's using a sine wave. We have four different shapes of LFO that we can apply. So if we switch the wave to saw now every three seconds we're going to hear the pitch travel in a, saw, in a sawtooth shape. So it starts high and then descends by there's its high note there's its low note two octaves i brought a tuner in to show the next wave because um, i'll be able to demonstrate some different behavior here so this is a square wave uh, again being applied to the pitch but now it's going to be basically high and low and nothing in between I should never say C3 without actually confirming it is. That's uh, the, the range is actually operating between C3 and C5. C4 is in the middle. I'm absolutely useless with my, my octaves. The keyboard must be set high. So you can see it's oscillating, toggling between octave five and octave three. If I set the LFO value to 50%, what are we going to get? I'm going to slow this rate down quite a bit so that we can really have an opportunity to listen to it. A3, E flat 4, A3, E flat 4. Let's have a think about that. I'm just going to turn the LFO off for a moment so that we can kind of consider what we've just heard. So A3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 six semitones away from E flat four. So when the slider was all the way at the upper limit, we had a pitch range of 24 semitones, but at 50%, we've only got a range of six semitones. This is your problem with logarithmic scales. You can't just assume that halfway is gonna do half of the job because it didn't. It didn't increase it by 
uh, six notes in both directions, it increased it by three notes in both directions. If I set this to three quarters, I'm going to show you a little tip there. When I was, um, this is a left click drag, and I got to about 750 odd, whatever, couldn't quite actually get all the way to exactly 750. If you right click on any control in an Archuria VST, then you have uh, fine control over it. So now I can reduce it in individual increments and get to exactly 750. So now when we play our C, what's the range going to be? G flat to G flat. So that's exactly one octave. So at three quarters on the slider, we have half the range that we do when we're at maximum. So just bear in mind, this is kind of, I don't think about synthesizers like this in these terms. I'm explaining it in that level of detail, so at least you're aware. But I don't kind of get my logarithmic calculator out and figure out what number to tie in. You, you move the goddamn slider and figure out what you want it to sound like. The whole thing is supposed to be organic. That's why these old synths have so many controls on them, to give you hands-on visceral control of the thing but it's also useful to understand the theory behind. The last wave option available to us is noise. This is uh, taking the output of what's called a sample and hold generator. Basically the synthesizer is going to generate a random tone and output that for the period of time specified by the LFO. So there's going to be absolutely no pattern to these notes at all. Now this is really useful, not so much as a pitch control, but sample and hold generators like this uh, that generate random signals are really useful um, as modulation sources to introduce kind of chaos into an otherwise ordered sound. So this is the kind of thing that we'll use later on in our sound design. Just bear in mind that random is good uh, on occasion. We take us back to our sine wave and get down to a reasonable rate. Now we'll introduce the other uh, control, which is delay time. This is a really simple concept. It describes an amount of time over which the LFO doesn't work. So when you press the key down, it's going to wait for a period of time and then start doing its thing. Now bear in mind what I've said in the in previous videos about the timings, you know, don't take them too literally don't worry too much about that but it is really useful particularly if you're introducing like vibrato effects where you have a stable sound initially and then it, it hits vibrato let's see if we can find something that actually sounds reasonably natural just using the sine tone So now we, we have an instrument that we, we hold the note down and then we have a little bit of stable sound before it begins to vibrato. You can even see it on the oscilloscope. You have that momentary static and then it starts to wobble. Adds real um, real world quality to the, to the sounds that you make. Generally speaking, you'll tend to find delay times in around kind of half a second to one second, that kind of thing. And that gets the most natural sort of effect. Now, we've not dealt with the voltage controlled filter yet. That'll be in the next episode. But just for now, I'll just give you a very quick demonstration of the LFO applying to uh, a filter modulation. So if I can increase this slider over here. So holding the key down, you have that momentary pause to make it a little bit longer, and then the modulation starts. Note, if I legato those notes, the LFO doesn't re-trigger, it waits for a completely clean note. 
Uh, one other thing I'll mention very briefly at this point, it's a heads up on a, a future episode, but just in case you're wondering what this flashing light is, the synthesizer actually has uh, the ability to split zones. At the moment we're in whole keyboard mode, so we're not seeing it, but just as an example, if I uh, switch to dual mode, I now have two completely independent oscillators that can cycle at different speeds, and those lights are telling you the speeds of the relative operators. Other than saying that, let's not worry about it for now. Like I say, we're in single mode. This other light is still flashing, despite the fact that our entire keyboard is like a single interface at the moment. Because I haven't dealt with it explicitly on either of the previous episodes, and I feel a little bit remiss for doing so, I'll just mention very briefly, this is where we control which oscillators are modulated by these effects. So all of that that I've been doing today has been on VCO1. But if we had two VCOs mixed together and this toggle was set to just VCO1, then if we have a pitch modulation on VCO1, but not VCO2, then you get the ability to mix those two oscillators together for different effects. Just bear in mind that this toggle switch applies to both LFO and envelope settings simultaneously. So either one on its own, both, or just VCO2 on its own. That's the LFO covered. In the next episode, we'll deal with the filters, this section over here. That's really when the, the synth comes to life, when we start uh, introducing the filter into the story. I uh, hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.